In northeastern Brazil, on the island of Itamaraca, a center has been created for the preservation and study of the manatee, a sea mammal seriously threatened with extinction. There are only 2,500 in the world, 500 in Brazil. The species has been protected by international conventions since 1967. The manatee, Peche Boi in Portuguese, is also the name of the refuge. Daniel is 24. He's responsible for the diet of the animals at the center, and he bottle feeds the babies until the age of two. I've been working with manatees for 10 years. I'm on duty every day. I have no days off at all. I've learned to love this animal that I'd never known existed. One day, I want to pass this work down to my son. The center's program began 20 years ago when the country became aware that the manatee's survival was being threatened. The silting up of part of Brazil's coastline as a result of deforestation has been indirectly instrumental in the animal's disappearance. During colonization, the virgin forest was raised for the exploitation of sugarcane. In heavy tropical rains, the land, with nothing to hold it, ran down to the rivers and caused the silting up of the estuaries. Sheltered by the currents, these estuaries had traditionally been the area where manatees would reproduce. Females, therefore, have to give birth at sea and lose their young because of the waves and violent currents. For decades, dozens of newborn infants have regularly run aground and died on the beach. Every year, two or three manatees are rescued by a team from Peche Boy. The Itamaraca Center was created to receive these orphans of the sea. They are all placed in Daniel's care. His job is a difficult one since very few of the babies survive. Nevertheless, he struggles and suffers with the animals when pneumonia strikes them. The survivors become his little protégés. After four years at the refuge, the manatees are released into their natural environment. The center presently has 12 manatees, of which there are two babies and two four-year-old youngsters, which are going to be set free in a week. the manatees receive close medical surveillance. Today, a team of specialists is going to measure a young female. And the, the length of the tail, how large it is, all, all these, these measures are important to know. Milton is the center's veterinarian. Oceanographer Regis Lima is responsible for the project. He is also one of its founders. In the past, to measure a manatee, the team would isolate it in an empty basin. Young females would lose their young because of the stress. Now, however, although it's more difficult, manatees are measured with more respect. Hey, hey. 
An adult manatee is between two and a half and four and a half meters long and weighs between 200 and 700 kilograms. In spite of their imposing silhouette, they are the most inoffensive animals in the world. The manatee is a playful animal and likes human company, which has contributed to its disappearance. Every day during low tide, Daniel gathers seaweed to feed the center's manatees. The manatee is an herbivorous sea mammal and consumes 10% of its weight in seaweed every day. It's hard work since the men have to stand in cold water for hours in order to pull out hundreds of kilograms. In nature, the manatee eats for six to eight hours a day, which is why it's also called sea cow. Decimated during colonization, the coasts of Brazil were once heavily populated with manatees. The Indians worshiped them and called them Yara, the mother of the ocean. This youngster will be released in a few days. In order to simulate pulling the weeds out, Daniel puts some in a tube, since the animal will have to face this difficult task once in its natural environment. Alagoas is a small state in this huge country. We're 400 kilometers south of the Itamaraca Center. Another team from Pesheboy is trying to capture Aldo, a manatee released a few years ago and which has adapted perfectly to life in the wild. The team is hoping that the animal will act as a guide for the two young manatees which will be set free in a few days. Carolina is a biologist and responsible for the reinsertion program at Alagoas. 
From the river where they found him, the team is going to take Aldo to an enclosure built at sea to help manatees adapt to nature. Aldo will wait in this enclosure for the center's two youngsters. Then they'll stay together and get acquainted for 10 days. They have to work quickly since the tide is rising and the waves will become violent, thus complicating the maneuver. Meanwhile, at the Itamaraca Center, the men are getting ready to transfer the two youngsters to be released, Araqueto and Boy Voador, in the tank. We've emptied this basin to capture them more easily and then put them in the pool for transport. It's normal for them to resist a little. Milton, the veterinarian, has just taken DNA samples from each of the animals. They will thus be identifiable and benefit from a more precise medical follow-up after they're set free. Regis Lima weighs them one last time, 300 kilograms each. He notes that the two youngsters are in good health. The team is truly dedicated to the manatees and proves it during a series of delicate maneuvers. Paradoxically, and in spite of its imposing size, the species is very fragile. We use mineral oil to protect the skin during the trip. The wind dries it out. Milton and Daniel will continue this operation throughout the 10-hour journey to Alagoas to avoid dehydration. In order to avoid fractures and bruises, the truck speed will be 30 kilometers an hour all the way to Alagoas. Manatees are very sensitive to cold, and the men's prime concern is that the animals will catch pneumonia.
In the morning, the truck nears its destination, an area which is still wild, with only rudimentary means of transportation. The name Alagoas comes from the Portuguese Lagoas, meaning lagoons. The region is very rich in these arms of the sea, which were once home to a great number of manatees. Releasing the animals is a very popular event, with a lot of media coverage. It only takes place once every three or four years. As usual, Daniel is very careful about his little protege's safety. School outings are organized in order to make the children aware of the importance of protecting and preserving the animal. The operation is a great success, with a lot of coverage in the local papers. In Mamaguape, a fishing village in northern Brazil, manatee fishing was an old tradition. Old Ernesto tells Daniel how he used to fish for these sea mammals. There, just a few steps from the village, since there were so many of them around. <laughs> One day, a friend of mine caught one in his net that weighed at least 300 kilograms. We used to fish for manatees with a spear, a rope, and a big 60 kilogram stone. It's the best meat in the world. At the time, the estuary was at least 30 meters deep. There were lots of them. Since then, they've cut the forest down and you can barely get through with a rowboat.
Times have changed, and today in the village of Mamaguape, fishermen's daughters work in a small factory which produces toy manatees. The money is reinvested into the Pesci Boy reinsertion program. Carolina and her assistant Carave put tracer belts on the two animals before setting them free. These belts are designed to break if the animal gets stuck or if someone tries to catch it. Thanks to the radio transmitter, the men can follow and bring back a manatee in the event it's carried off by violent currents. Jim, a well-known manatee specialist from Florida, is a very distinguished guest. He explains to Carave how to put on the belt with which he has already experimented. However, it's not an easy task. One false move and you have to start all over again. Ten days have gone by and the doors of freedom are opening. Boi Voador and Araqueto have finally learned how to breathe at sea after swallowing quite a few gulps of seawater. It's now time to go further out along with their guide, Aldo. Regis Lima, Daniel, and all the members of the project are hoping that the released animals will become part of manatee groups living in nature and reproduce, thus slowly repopulating the Brazilian seacoast. The manatee is one of the symbolic species of the country. The adventure on the tropical sea has only just begun for these manatees, whose life expectancy is 50 years. Daniel is deeply attached to these youngsters, which he has been feeding for four years. He's hoping that they will be able to venture along the coast without danger. <laughs> 